This is Dr. Nikki, and we are back looking at the bigger part unknown first grade compare word problems using Math Learning Center digital tools. All right, here we go. There were four, there were five blue butterflies. Notice that it's shaded in gray so the kids can automatically see. There were five blue butterflies. And there were two more yellow butterflies than blue butterflies. So what I do to have kids understand it is I have them put the original five. So we're building concept. There were five blue. There were also five yellow. On top of those five yellow, there were two more. So there's two more yellow than blue. There were five blue and there were two more yellow than blue butterflies. How many yellow butterflies were there? And then in second grade, you would say, or a multi-step problem, how many butterflies are there all together? Let's look at another one. Remember, we have these beautiful icons. Yay! So I can go down here and I could say, there were seven black and white penguins on the rock. And there were three more blue ones than black ones on the rock. So what I can do is I can, I want to build that concept, right? So I know that there were three more. So I know that there were seven blue ones as well. And on top of the seven blue, there was three more. So I can add those three. How many blue were there? There were 10. And you really want kids to see that, right? That we know that there were seven of each of them, at least, because there was seven black. And then on top of that, there was seven more, there were three more blue. So we have the seven, and then we've got three more. So the kids could see, oh, there were 10 blue. And then we would say, how many were there all together? You want kids to see that. and eventually you go, you know, you work with the rec and rec as well, and you can see that same thing as on that visual model. If I can say there were five, um, you know, penguins on the rock and on the top rock, and there were two more than that on the bottom. So I know that there were five, and then on top of that, there was two more. So how many were there, right? There was one bird at the top of the tree and at the bottom of the tree there was one more bird than that so there was one bird and then there was another bird at the bottom and then on top of that bird there was one more right so that's really important to build that concept that when you say there's one there's one more you're saying that there's the same amount and then there's some more so kids can really see that there's five kids upstairs and downstairs there's two more kids downstairs than there are upstairs so we know that downstairs there's five kids same amount and then on top of that there's two more so there's five upstairs and there's two more than that downstairs so there's five downstairs as well and then there's the two more that concept is really hard for kids, but if they can understand conceptually and have visual models to see it, then they'll be able to solve those type of problems. And then you would go to the number line. And with the number line, you know, there's five kids upstairs and there's two more than that downstairs. Now with the double number line, one of the things you can do is you can say, okay, so there's two more than that downstairs. So there's five and then there's two more, right? So we know there's five kids upstairs and there's two more than that downstairs. So there's the five, and then there's two more. Double number line really works well to show that visual. But I want you to see, I did the 10 frame, I did the wreck and wreck, and then I did the number line. Number lines are great. They're visual, but remember, they're abstract. So you want to do some number frames. You want to do some rec and recs, and then you want to do some number line stuff. So remember, these are first grade problems, and we're teaching kids to add word problems, you know, with smaller numbers, and then you can go on to larger numbers. 
and you're trying to get students to be able to model in more than one way. You know, the research says when they can model in different ways, then they're actually building their conceptual knowledge as well as their procedural fluency of how to do the problem. So you want kids to be able to explain it to you and show it to you in a variety of ways. And as you're teaching it, these tools are so great to have that on your uh, smart board and or, or you know your interactive board and then the kids can have the number line in their hand or the wreck and wreck in their hand or the tin frame in their hand that should be all part of the toolkit that they're working with so that is compare bigger part unknown remember three types of compare problems you're either looking for the bigger part or you're looking for the smaller part or you're looking for the difference and so this is looking for the bigger part all right happy mathing Get the book, Problem Solving in Action, K2. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Rutledge. Look at the website, drnickynewton.com. Look at the other videos that are on YouTube or on my um, Facebook page. And happy mathing. Start those word problems from the very beginning of the year. And remember, you don't have to do a word problem, a different word problem every day. You can stick with the same word problem and just do different models of that word problem every day. All right. Thank you. Happy mathing.